Development continues at the Heart of America Tallgrass Edition in Hayes. Grow Hayes Executive Director Doug Williams stops by to share the latest on this episode of The Post Podcast. Well, as, as we have talked before, but it's been a while, uh, you know, that was a, a development that's been done in three phases. The first phase was 36 lots and was started, uh, the infrastructure on it was started in uh, late 2021. And uh, since that time, uh, all 36 lots have sold, 23 of them now, I believe it's 23, have people living in homes in that addition. And then there's 13 homes under construction. So, uh really been a lot of activity out there and and uh, for the people who live out there i'm sure they can tell you there's been a lot of activity because there's always large equipment in and out of there but uh, that's been terrific and then uh, shortly the they just completed the street work on the 18 lots to the north the next cul-de-sac to the north and all of those lots are sold to the same builders that have been building in phase one and we would expect to see some construction on those lots this spring with uh, very possibly a good majority of those lots being constructed and and homes being completed this year. And uh, just this week, the Board of Directors of Heart of America agreed to complete improvements on the Wheatland Drive north of 22nd Street. That's the street that goes into NCK Tech. And there are roughly 12 lots along that stretch of road, and uh, they agreed to put in the uh, street, sewer, water, all the uh, infrastructure for an additional 12 homes there. So lots going on. Fantastic. Yeah, and, you know, it, late 2021, so kind of thinking about it, really, this all happened in about a year. Is this moving along as, uh, as we expected, or are we a little ahead? I think we're a little ahead, right? We're well ahead. Uh, we, we really thought that this would be a three- to five-year kind of uh, build out of these first two phases for sure it's going to be more like two years uh i'm not sure it's been a long long time in this community that's that we have built homes at this pace uh you know with basically 36 homes in a 18 month time frame uh just hasn't happened here for a long long time so uh, hats off to heart of america for making that possible and and uh you know they're, they're selling as fast as they can build them there's strong demand for them, in part because we there, there's a, a price cap on the uh, on the first 36 at two hundred twenty five thousand uh, dollars. The next eighteen, uh, the infrastructure cost a little bit more, so the lot price went up to the builders, and they've had some cost increases. So they're going to be at two thirty five on the next eighteen, and then uh, the the houses along Wheatland. Those are a little bigger lots, and we don't the infrastructure per lot is quite a bit more expensive. So, not exactly sure what's going to happen there. Whether there'll be single family, whether there'll be some some duplexes, some townhouses. Uh, we've got several people looking at different options, uh, but we know we have to get the street and all the infrastructure in there before anything can happen. So that's step number one. You know, I'm wondering as we're constructing these houses at such a pace are we seeing the effects on the rest of the market that we hope for the lowering of the basically the prices i think the depending on price range uh, the local market has softened but in this particular price range i think that 175 to 250 let's say uh good good property will still sell very quickly uh you know it's been interesting the of the 36 homes that were in the first phase It's been about a third, a third, a third. A third of the people have come from outside the community and bought homes there. A third of the people are first-time buyers buying their first home. And the other third are either upsizers or downsizers. So 12 or so have been people who have either sold a larger home and moved over there or sold a smaller home and moved up. And so that has added another roughly 12 homes to the market in that time frame. Uh, so it's all good. I mean, that's we, we need to add this inventory if we're going to stabilize prices. And I, I don't know that we want to bring prices down necessarily, but uh, w- we certainly want people to have choices when it comes to buying homes. And, and uh, this has helped immensely in that situation. With the, it sounds just like overwhelming success of this project as it's continuing on. Are we looking ahead towards similar projects in the area that we could tap uh, nonprofits to help us develop? 
Well, uh, you know, I would I would point to the Grove, which is uh, Grohaze's project, and it's an, a nonprofit, and we're we're trying to uh, get some things going there. We are going to be getting some things going there. Uh, we we do have a problem in our community with not enough lots available. If if we go back to this one percent growth number that we use as kind of our our goal, you know, it says that we have to have eighty five to ninety new homes a year or new units that can be apartments that can be houses we have we have not built to that scale for a long long time last year we had 39 single family residential permits in in Hayes and surrounding Hayes in the 3 mile jurisdiction i think it is or or what have you i would be hard pressed right now to look at 2023 and find 39 lots that we could build houses on. So our ability, and and that's well below what we need to be doing. So our ability to continue to have some growth of population uh, depends on housing, and we're we're a little bit behind the eight ball on that. You know, when you extend that out and look at the entire county, does it get better or worse in terms of building to need? Worse. You know, if you look at Ellis or Victoria, they they have really very few or no buildable lots that are ready to go that don't take infrastructure and those type of things and and what people need to understand is the when you talk about a, a process of developing raw land it's probably 18 months to two years to get it to the point where you can start building on it and so you've got to be looking ahead and uh, we, we haven't done enough of that locally so we need to we need to step up our game in that area. Yeah, do you think with the projects like the Wheatland Project that we're going to be able to, I don't know, basically make that curve up, or are we looking at real trouble five, seven years down the road? Well, I, I think we can. That's part of the solution. It's not all of the solution. So we're looking at some other things, and and we need to be looking at some other developments how we make those happen, and uh, that's part of why you know there, there's not a lot of investment from the private sector in in real estate development here. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't think there's a lot of money in it. I think that's why the uh, private or the uh, not-for-profits have have stepped up and says we're we're not all that concerned about profit. We're concerned about getting houses in our community and and uh, assisting population growth. And so uh, uh, we are working hard on some other projects, looking at some other options, and and uh, we'll continue to do so. And of course, there's a. We've talked about a, several of the apartment buildings that are going up here in in uh, Hayes and in, in Ellis County, like the uh, St. Joseph's Church or uh, school building. Well, church school building, right. both. And then uh, down over in Washington, how much is that going to impact as we're moving forward and trying to develop these other projects? It's really important because we need we need housing of all types. And, uh, you know, while while we have focused primarily on residential, single family residential development, we absolutely need some uh, new nice apartments available at various price points. And and those two projects are are addressing some of that. I know there's some other uh, income qualified organizations that would like to do some development here if they could find the right spot. And then they have a cycle they have to go through to get tax credits to allow them to construct these income qualified projects like the Washington School project or the Stone Post projects down at uh, 4th and Main. Uh, so, but very important that we add housing of all types and uh, of all price ranges. You know, as the Imagine Ellis County group is actively out there and recruiting people to move to Ellis County from more urban areas, like I think about the Front Range out in Colorado we've talked about in the past, how important is it to have that variety of housing available for those folks? I think about if I have a friend, he's a tech guy, he makes a ridiculous amount of money, but it's just him. He's a middle-aged guy and kind of lives on his own. He doesn't need a full-size house or really anything expensive. He loves his apartment and he stays he stays where he's at just because he loves the apartment so much. And how much is that going to factor in as we're trying to recruit people like that in Ellis County? Well, it's critical. That's that's why you need diverse uh, housing uh, inventory, just like the Frontier Apartments, the former St. Joseph School. I mean, that's a very unique, cool place, and uh, the the right type of occupant is going to love that place. But it's not for everybody. A growing family is not going to go in there. So, uh, again, we need we need diversity in housing, and so we need to be delivering 
all types and all price ranges to the market at a time when it's extremely difficult to do anything in an affordable manner. I mean, it, it really is – costs have gone up so much, and it makes it so difficult to – uh, build something new and be price, uh, you know, affordable in any way, shape, or form. So it's it's a tough time. You know, you mentioned the kind of the cool living, and I think about here in Hayes the opportunities that we have in the downtown buildings and the upstairs. And I've, I recently saw a story just in the last few days about some of the cities around us that have really moved to utilize that space for housing above their downtown markets. And I wonder if you want to talk uh, with the last couple minutes we have here about those efforts in Hayes and how that all will play into this housing bit. Well, we uh, historically, we have done a good job of developing downtown loft apartments in, in many of the buildings downtown. Our downtown is a little bit different than some other places. I visited Pittsburgh, and I think it's their Block 21 project. And their downtown is interesting because it's they are huge buildings down there. I mean, they, they're huge. I mean, I think they put 70 or 80 apartments in one building in downtown Pittsburgh. And we don't have that type of construction here. So we have put a number of lofts downtown. And, and I know that there's still some plans to do so. But there's not a whole lot we can add down there. Most of it's been done. And so, uh, but looking at different ways like that, looking at uh, mixed use development where you've got commercial and then maybe residential on top of that you know we see a little bit of that downtown there might be some other opportunities in the community to do that even with some new construction where you would build a a strip center but also go up another story and put some housing above that and have that kind of experience which we don't have a lot of here yeah you know i always think about that you see that in cities like a lot but you don't see that out here and i always kind of wondered about like why we developed that way but we could probably talk hours on that but it is, it is different. Very different. It has to do with the age of the community, the way a, a community was developed. And then <clears throat> sometimes it's just a matter of a, of a developer saying, yeah, I want I want to do this. I want to give this a try and take that risk because it is, it is a risk without a doubt. Yeah. Well, Doug, with our last minute, I wonder if you want to share any updates, uh, stuff going on down there to Brief Space. Well, we've got our uh, quarterly luncheon coming up on March the 7th. Uh, the topic will be the Grove And we'll be talking about as much as we have figured out on that development, which we kind of know what we're going to be doing there. So we'd love to have anybody that wants to come attend that. We do ask that you call our office and RSVP because we typically get a pretty good turnout and we have to have a head count for meals and things. And at some point we have to cut off uh, the number of people that can be there based on our occupancy capabilities. But uh, want to invite anybody that would have an interest in coming down and, and uh, attending that to do so. We'll also put it online and uh, have a Zoom link on our website and our Facebook page and that kind of thing if, if people want to watch instead of uh, come down. Always such great conversations in those. I love watching those. It's, it's always good. People have good ideas. People have good questions. And it's a, it's a wonderful forum to air all the, the thoughts, concerns, and, and ideas. 